my granny. This is my grandmother, and this is my grandma. Seniors are very important. I love you, Babcha. We need you. You, you are love. When the sun is bright, or in the darkest night, we're all in this together. I've got many friends, and you are one of them. We're all in this together. It will be okay. Sava Vienna Lee. I've got many songs to sing, won't you? Sing them too. Sing them too. Hi, I'm Greg, the pepper master at Brooks Pepper Fire Foods. I've invited you into my home kitchen and today we'll be making some fresh tomato sauce from locally grown tomatoes. I fell in love with food uh, when we had moved to the Bahamas as a child. I discovered fresh peppers, fresh tomatoes, fresh fish from the ocean, and it really developed my palate uh, into what it is today. And right now, my palate really wants fresh tasting, intense, rich foods. And that's what I'm gonna share with you today how to make a fresh tomato sauce. So here today we're in my home kitchen, which is situated in Rigo, and right below us is my commercial kitchen where we make sauces for various companies and ship them all over Canada and into the United States. When you arrive at my store in Rigo, you'll feel like you've been transported into another world. And indeed, you have been. We make over 150 different products in our small kitchen in the, in the back downstairs. And behind the red curtain is the heart of the magic, where you will see all the activity that goes into putting together products. So there's our shop in the front and in behind the shop is our commercial kitchen. This is a Canadian registered food facility that makes food products for many small artisanal companies. For example, today we're actually making more tomato sauce, a lot of tomato sauce. Our company, Brooks Pepper Fire Foods, really wants to use local supplies. And we've been doing so for a good 10, 12 years now. We're using local tomatoes, onions, garlic. We really believe in local food security. And if we can get those uh, fresh fruits and vegetables grown without the use of pesticides and herbicides, if they're organic, we love them. We really want to have local food security and one of our missions is to make sure that we're doing everything we can to support local farmers and locally grown ingredients. The reason that I have such a passion for all these foods that I make is, is my desire to replicate the fresh taste that I found in the jungles and on the reefs in the Bahamas. Some of our more popular uh, hot sauces and dinner sauces 
are the Sting and Scorpion, which is fire roasted peppers. We've got uh, a Thai green curry sauce, a sticky ginger garlic black sauce. There's so many different flavors and levels of richness and controlled heat that you will be surprised and amazed. There are so many different varieties of chili peppers these days. There's literally thousands of them. These are cherry hot peppers, not to be confused with cherry mild peppers. Here I have my favorite pepper in the world. This is the goat pepper originating in the Bahamas. It's very hot. You want to be careful when you eat these. This pepper is probably the most common pepper, hot pepper in the world. It's a red habanero and you find them in dishes from all over the place. They are delicious, useful, and pretty hot. This is the final pepper I'm speaking of today. It's a seven pot pepper, meaning it has multiple lobes on it. It's got a little stinger on the bottom. A bit of a warning. It's telling you that it's hot. So what we have done is we've created a scale, which you'll see on the front of our, all of our products, that ranges from minus four to plus 28. The minus four actually takes heat off your tongue and it's called the antidote. So if you ever get anything that's a little too hot for your palate, take some of the antidote. It'll help you out. So I'm not using any of these hot peppers in the tomato sauce that we're making today. But if you like it hot, these are some great options for you to add. If you can't find these ones, I'm sure you can find others. Today, we are making a very simple and small quantity of fresh tomato sauce. It uses simple ingredients, fresh tomatoes, fresh garlic, fresh basil, touch of salt, olive oil. You'll see you can make a small quantity of this without too much trouble. And if there's too much that you've made, you can always bag it up and put it in the freezer for future use. We'll also be going through a couple different varieties of tomatoes so that you can decide which ones you want in your tomato sauce. There are no bad tomatoes. And if you'd like to join along, you can look at the recipe, which is posted on the series Facebook page. So today we're working with fresh tomatoes and I really encourage you to go to a local farmer's market or to a farmer that's growing in their field and get fresh tomatoes. You want them to ripen on the vine. You want them fresh and full and firm. The variety of tomato that you select is important, but it's more important that you buy local fresh tomatoes. We're going to be using San Marzano tomatoes today, but you can also use any other variety. There's so many. There's heirloom tomatoes. There's uh, there's a beefsteak tomato, which has a lot of water. You'll have to cook it longer, get rid of some of that moisture. But the tomato that we're using today is considered the world gold standard in tomatoes. We're not going to be using any of these hot peppers in, in what we're cooking, so I'm just going to put them to the side. There we go. And I want to show you the tomatoes that we're going to be using. This is the San Marzano tomato, and this is another local field tomato. You can see these ones are a little bit more elongated. These are paste tomatoes. They have a lower percentage of water. So I'm just going to cut one open, show you the inside, show you how much, how thick it is around the outside of the tomato and in the heart of the tomato. For a comparison, this is another tomato. You can see the difference here. This one is full of seeds and, and water and will not have the flavor that this one will have. Okay. We're also going to be using fresh garlic and fresh basil. 
The basil is something that you need very little of, or you can put a lot of. You can't mess this up. You can't put too much garlic. You can't put too much basil. You'll see. So we're gonna have a little fun now, and I wanna show you why you would use one tomato over another. I'm gonna take the San Marzano, and I'm gonna take the local field tomato, and I'm gonna squeeze them to show you how much juice is in one versus the other. This is important when we come to actually cooking the sauce down. The one with more water, you're gonna have to cook a lot longer. Let me get a plate and I'll show you how this works. And we'll squeeze both of these tomatoes. This is the San Marzano. This is the local field tomato. And I'm just gonna squeeze them onto the plate and you're gonna see how much juice comes out. Look at the difference. We want to use the one that has more meat in it, more flesh to it, not the one that's full of water. So this is my choice. This is the uh, San Marzano tomato. These uh, originally came from the volcanic soils in Italy, but they're grown here in Quebec now, and they're just as delicious. This is another tomato which is commonly grown here. It ripens early, but it's a bit weaker in, uh, in flavor, and it's full of water. So, we are using the San Marzano tomato to make tomato sauce today. I plan to make about a liter, liter and a half of tomato sauce. We've got a dozen or so San Marzano tomatoes, fresh basil, we've got some garlic, salt, olive oil, and fresh black pepper. And we are going to need some tools to make this tomato sauce. The first thing that you need is a pot. In the pot, we're gonna boil some water enough to poach our tomatoes. When the tomatoes have been poached, we will need a utensil to scoop the tomatoes out of the boiling water. Don't try to do this with your fingers. We will need a container to put the poached tomatoes into. This is a, a stainless steel pot. You could use a bowl of any kind that will, will take a bit of heat. Once we have our tomatoes poached and the skins off, we're gonna pass them through a sieve using a spatula. If you don't have a sieve, we can work with our hands. And finally, we need a pot to cook our tomato sauce in. The first thing we'll be cooking in here is the garlic. We'll be sweating it with some extra virgin olive oil. Okay, so let's make some tomato sauce. Okay, so step one is to boil some water. So, I take my pot, it's about a four liter pot. I'll fill it up about halfway. There we go. All right, so let's get this water on the stove. Turn that on, bring it to a boil. Okay, so while the water is coming to a boil, we're gonna work with the, the garlic. I'll just move these things out of the way. And here I have fresh garlic. I'm just gonna uh, break them open. Yeah, I, I don't know how much garlic you guys like, but I like lots of garlic. Sometimes I'll use it fresh, like this. Other times, we'll use it uh, roasted or Today what we're gonna do is, is just sweat it a little bit. Break all these off. Lots of garlic. Nothing like the smell of fresh garlic. Sometimes we roast garlic here, 20 kilos at a time, and the smell just intoxicates the whole town. I'll just 
moving the skins out of the way. Now I'm going to cut the tip off. It's a little bit hard. Now if you have a garlic press at home and you'd like to do it that way, that's fine. You can put these through a garlic press. I like seeing the slivers of garlic in what I'm making. So I'll just dice up this garlic and prepare it while the water's boiling. There we go. Easy enough. So we have extra time while that water's boiling. We're going to take some of these uh, basil leaves and just pull the leaves off. You don't, you don't need to use the stalks, although that's not uh, a big deal if you do. So let's pull these off. And the basil, I like to just coarsely chop it like that. You don't need to do anything else. You don't even have to cut it up. You can throw it in whole. The flavor of the basil is going to dissolve into the tomato sauce. So the leaf itself at the end won't really have much basil flavor left in it. It'll all be in the sauce. Okay, so the next step is to blanch the tomatoes. So we'll take the tomatoes. We don't need this basil, we've already worked with it. So I recommend putting the tomatoes in the boiling water with the slotted spoon. It's a lot safer. Gently. No hurry. Gently. No hurry. You don't want your fingers in the water. There we go. So that's enough tomatoes for that amount of water. We'll just wait the minute, minute and a half, and we're looking for them to crack. So once we see the cracks starting to form in the skins of the tomato, we're going to scoop them out with a slotted spoon and put them into another pan where they're going to wait until we're ready to remove the skins. The total amount of time to poach the tomatoes, it should be about between 30 seconds and a minute and a half per tomato. There they go. See how they're starting to split? That's ready. So, probably the first one in is the first one out. All right, these are, these are ready. You can see the skin is split, and we're going to put them into the pan and get the, all the ones that have split. You can see the split here. They should all be done. Put the rest of the tomatoes into the, whoop, use the spoon. So the last of the tomatoes are in there, another minute to a minute and a half in the boiling water, and their skins will split like these ones have. Okay, the rest of the tomatoes are starting to split, so we'll start removing them from the water. We 
don't need the heat anymore. Okay, so now the tomatoes are ready to be skinned. Okay, so I'm just going to make a little space here for the tomatoes. I'll bring the tomatoes over here and a pot to put the peeled tomatoes into. All right, so now we're ready for step three, removing the skins from the tomatoes. Very simple. So you just peel them off like you're peeling an egg. worry if there's a little bit of skin left on them it's gonna come out in the straining step uh, some of them will come off easily some of them you might have to fight with a little bit Another skin tomato. skin. Get most of the skins off and uh, we're ready to make the sauce from the de-skinned tomatoes. All right. Okay, so we just have to get rid of these tomato skins. I'll put them in my compost bin. And there we are, finished step three. So now we're ready for step four. I'll just get my sieve and we'll start putting the tomatoes. What I do is I take a tomato, I just crush it in my hand. I just want to break up the tomato. Don't forget, these are still basically fresh tomatoes. We're just breaking them up so we can get some of the seeds out. We don't need to get all the seeds out. If you're in a real hurry, you can step, skip this step. Just crush them up. You just want to break them up. We could even go through like that. This is very grounding. It's like doing gardening. You get your hands into it. All right, just a couple left. Crush them up. So we have just taken all of the skinned tomatoes and we've broken them up into the sieve so that we can press them through the sieve. What we're doing here is getting rid of the seeds and any little bits of skin that are left over. I'm just gonna break them up with my hand like this as they go through the sieve. And you can see the juice coming out the side of the sieve. That's what we want to do. Just keep pushing them through, moving them around, crushing them up. Okay, so we're just, just crushing this, pushing it through the, the sieve. Here, it's easier like this. You just push it through. Okay, so as you do this, I know some people don't like using their hands in cooking. So if you're one of them, you'll be using a spatula to do all this. I don't mind touching my food. And when we've got most of this pushed through the, the sieve and we have only skins and seed left in the, in the pulp, then we're pretty much done. And we're gonna end up in here with, with bits like, uh, like this and all these seeds. You can already see the juice, it's quite clear. 
And we're just gonna get some more of this through. You may need to take a, uh, a spatula every once in a while. The spatula is used to clear the sieve. That way when you try to, you go to push through more product, it's got a nice clean surface to go through. And then once we get all this through, we'll start to uh, reduce this into a, a sauce. So there are some bits and pieces left in here, like here's a piece of skin, and it's, got, it's a little bit tough. Depending on how green the tomatoes are, or how ripe they are, you'll get more or less uh, left over at this point. You could keep working this for another 20 minutes, but I find it's not very time efficient. So the bulk of that is through. We put through about 80%, I guess, of the original tomatoes. So that's how much we have left in here. All right, so I just clear the, the sieve again. Get all the bits that are stuck in there. A few of these seeds will make it through the, the sieve. Okay, so we're just gonna finish scraping off the, uh, the tomato that's come through the sieve. So we don't waste too much. So it looks like we're about done, uh, step four, and we're ready for step five, which is sweating the garlic. Alright, so let's just get rid of this pot and wash my hands up. There we go. And we'll get this tomato over to the stove. And now we're ready for step five, which is sweating the garlic. So we're going to put a bit of olive oil in here. Maybe a half an ounce. Let's put some more. Love olive oil. And now we're gonna take the garlic, get the garlic into the pot, and that's what we've got in the pot. So, now we have the garlic in the olive oil. We're ready to make it sweat. So we don't really wanna fry the garlic. We just want to heat it up and soften it. It's called sweating the garlic. Sometimes browned garlic, if it's fried too much, it leaves a bit of a bitterness in the sauce. And we don't want that. We just want to warm it up and soften it. This usually takes like two minutes, one minute. It doesn't take long at all. You just want to soften the garlic. very next step is to add the tomato that we have lovingly sieved. Okay, hang in there, we're almost done. Step six is adding the tomato to the sweated garlic. Okay, so we want to take the tomatoes and very slowly we're going to pour it into the sweated garlic. Now the oil is hot, so if you pour this in too quick, it could splatter. You don't want that. Okay, so now that the tomatoes are in, we need to turn the heat up on this and bring it to a simmer. And we're gonna simmer it and reduce it. When we bring this up to a simmer, it's like a near boil. It's not a full-on hard boil. 
You just want the product moving. You don't want it sticking to the bottom of the pot, although it's, it's very unlikely that this will, will stick to the pot, except at the very end. So we'll simmer this probably for 10 or 15 minutes and reduce it down. If you want to add some uh, fresh chili peppers or other ingredients to this, now is the time to do that while the sauce is simmering. Because you want the other ingredients, the chili peppers or onions, to have enough time to, uh, to work into the sauce. You could even, if you're adding uh, onion, uh, you could sweat it as well at the beginning with the garlic. Okay, so our sauce has been simmering for, I don't know, five to 10 minutes. And uh, now I'm just gonna stir it and check the consistency of it, see if it's at the right thickness. I'm looking for the thickness of it. The sauce looks good. So, now that the sauce is almost done, we have a couple of options that we could follow. One, if you want to do it the original Italian way and you're cooking some pasta, you cook the pasta very al dente, strain it, and then add the pasta to the tomato sauce and finish cooking the pasta in the sauce. That way the tomato sauce infuses into the, into the pasta and it, uh, the pasta helps finish and thicken up the sauce. Another way is to make a bolognese from it. Uh, you fry up some ground beef and onions and peppers, whatever you want in a pan. Pour the tomato sauce over the ground beef. Simmer it for a few minutes, like two or three minutes, and you have a nice bolognese sauce which you could use. If you want to keep it this way, it's ready for vegetarian dishes. Have fun with it. Okay, so now we're ready for the finishing step, step seven, where we're gonna add a bit of uh, sea salt, some fresh ground black pepper, and some of our fresh basil. These three ingredients can be added to your preference. Some people like less salt, more salt, less pepper, more pepper. This part is up to you. So, we're ready to finish this off. Get the fresh basil, look at this fresh basil. Ready? This is awesome. Okay, now this is done. Look at that. Mm. You know, should we cook this longer? It's not necessary, but you could. I like to add the basil at the very end. So ideally, we're done. If you want to cook it longer before you add the basil, that's fine too. Just don't overcook it or you'll get rid of all those fresh tomato overtones from our amazing local farmers. Okay, so now that our sauce is done, we have a couple of options. We can either put it in a closed, let it cool off first, then put it in a closed container and put it in the fridge for up to four or five days. Or you could cool it, put it in a freezer bag, Ziploc it, throw it in the freezer and use it uh, within the next six or eight months. So thank you for joining me today on this episode of how to make a homemade tomato sauce. Uh, I, I hope you find the courage to make this at home. Um, 
If you have any questions about it or want more information, you can always uh, contact me on my website at www.peppermaster.com or you can come and visit me in my shop in Rigo and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have or to explain further details. So, last thing for me to do is taste the sauce. Mm, fresh tomato, it's amazing. I'm gonna be eating this sauce for dinner tonight, but before I do that, I'm gonna have my wife come in and taste it and make sure it's good enough for her. So, Tina, Hi. come on in. What you got? Uh, it's a tomato sauce. Oh, it smells yummy. Wait, can I taste it? Yes. Is it hot? No, it's cooled off. <laughs> uh, I asked that because he puts hot peppers in everything. So, no. Not How, today. Is it hot, hot? No, it's not. Okay. All right. So, here you go. Oh my god, that's good. It's good. You like it? Mm. Yeah, I do. I we like can, it we can have it for dinner? Really We're going to have it for dinner, I think. Wish you could join us. Mm. Bon appétit. A uh -huh. Have a great day. Bye. Lucky me. When the sun is bright, or in the darkest night, we're all in this together. I've got many friends, and you are one of them. We're all in this together It will be okay Ça va bien aller I've got many songs to sing Won't you sing them too? I'll see you again At the rainbow's end Fair or stormy weather For love is like a smile Let's let's see you in a while We're all in this together